I'm going to begin by launching Google Chrome and searching the web for Flipgrid. I'll click on the first link to visit flipgrid.com. If it's my first time, I can click on the blue Educator Sign Up button and select Sign Up with Google. I can choose the account I'd like to use to sign up with and go ahead and log in. When prompted, fill out the required information and click Let's Go. Then click Start My Grid. Think of grids as your classes or your communities of learners. You can create as many grids as you would like. Most teachers opt to make one for each of their class sections. We'll begin by giving our grid a name. I'm going to call mine Mr. Teacher's Grid. We then need to select a type of grid. This is important because it's the way in which individuals will be able to access our content. You can choose to set up your grid using school emails, student IDs, or make it public. Most commonly, you would use school emails. This essentially means that users would have to have a school district email account in order to be able to access the grid and the content within it. When you select this, you're going to be prompted to add the school email domains. By default, it should include your district email. But keep in mind, you might have to add any other domains that might be unique to students, for example. Once you've entered all of the domains, click the Next button. At this point, your grid is ready to go. You can copy a link to your grid and share it however you like, or you can use the included Share to Google Classroom button. When you're ready, click on Go to your grid. Now that our grid has been created, we can do some customizing. I'd like to begin by changing the artwork that's included, and I can do so by clicking on Actions and selecting Edit Grid. Here, I can edit the name of my grid and even customize the link to my grid. If needed, I can change the type of grid that I set up earlier. I can also change all sorts of other features for my grid, including notifications, whether or not videos can be downloaded, turning on captions, allowing followers for my grid, and various other things. Finally, I can personalize the appearance of my grid by changing the banner image, selecting from some pre-selected options or even uploading my own. When I have everything set the way I want it, simply click on Update Grid. Now it's time to turn our attention to Flipgrid topics. Topics are basically assignments or prompts that you can give to students that they can start responding to. You can think of them also as simply folders for videos within your Flipgrid account. Let's create our first topic by clicking on the Add New Topic button. We'll begin by giving our topic a title. For this particular group, I'm going to just use the Flipgrid videos to create check-in videos that I can share with my students. I'm not going to be collecting any content from students through this particular topic. Now I'm going to choose the maximum duration for the videos. I generally set it to the highest possible recording time, which is 10 minutes. I can add a brief prompt for this topic explaining what it's all about. And I can add an optional resource that Flipgrid calls a focus. This can be anything from a doc to a recording, an image, just about anything you can imagine that pertains to this particular activity. I can click on Create Topic or More Options to see additional features that I can add and change. When I'm all set, I click on Create Topic. I can share this topic the same way I could share my entire grid, with a link or even directly to Google Classroom. At this point, any students who I share the link with could begin submitting their own videos to the grid. However, in this example, I just want to use the grid to create my own teacher video messages to share with students, so I'm not actually going to share the link with anyone. 
but I am going to go ahead and create my first video response. Now you'll see the recording window for Flipgrid. If it's the first time you're using it, you might have to click the Allow button that pops up. Let's take a look at all the different options, beginning with Filters. This controls the appearance of your video. You can turn on a variety of choices or turn them off. You can also add text in multiple colors to your video. You just click on the text button, type something in, and then you can drag it around your screen and put it where you want it. Next are emoji. You can add a variety of emoji and drag them and resize them on your screen as you're recording. You can also draw right on top of your screen using the pen tool. You can change colors and create different shapes. You can make your video go away and have a black or a whiteboard to draw on as well, which is great for demonstrating problems and different procedures. You can turn the board off whenever you'd like. Finally, you can add a custom sticker, which is basically just an image that will show up on your video. Clicking on the clear button on top will take all of the things you've added away. You can also view the topic for the video you're working on if you need to be reminded of the prompt, and you can add a simple sticky note to your video by clicking on the icon on the right-hand side. Clicking on the three dots gives you access to the new Flipgrid screen recording tool, the ability to add a video clip that you have saved, and the ability to turn your audio on and off. You can also use the icon on the right to upload a custom video clip. When you're ready to start recording, click on the Record button and your video will begin after a three second countdown. When you're done recording, click the Pause button to pause it. You can restart it if you'd like or just click Next. It will play your video back so you can preview it. And if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and take a selfie. This becomes the thumbnail image for your video. When you're ready, click Next. Type out your display name that you'd like to appear with the video. Give your video a title if you'd like, and you can add a link to it that's associated if you'd like as well. Once you click Submit Video and Complete, your video is ready to go, and you'll see it back within your topic. Now we're going to share this video with our students. So we click on the Share button, and here we again have the option to copy a link directly to this video or share it to Google Classroom. I'm going to send it to Classroom. I can choose the class I want to send it to by clicking on the drop-down menu, and decide whether it should be an assignment, question, announcement, or material. Now I simply have to fill in the rest of the details, and I'm ready to post it to my classroom. Let's see what this will look like for students. Students will see the normal post in their stream, and they can click on the link, which will open up just this one video in its own window. Videos run smoothly and seamlessly and are incredibly easy for students to interact with. As such, Flipgrid is a great tool for creating and sharing quick videos with students that can include instruction or simple welcome messages.